This is Marco with our washers at washmart.com, your Houston and DFW pressure washer store. We're going to go over how to build a pressure washer trailer. This is going to be very simple, and this is going to be more or less a cookie cutter trailer that I'm going to go over. The first thing that we do whenever we build a trailer is install the tank. Whenever you have a tank, we recommend spending the extra and getting what they call bolt down hoops or straps. Some tanks don't have an application where this is possible, so you'll have to fabricate your own straps and either putting D-rings on the bottom or hooks to have it to where you can make some straps and have it to where the tank is strapped down. Once your tank is installed, there are a couple of things that you can do next. One of the things that we recommend doing is just installing the pressure washer. Whenever you bolt down the pressure washer, you just want to keep in mind where the exhaust is blowing to make sure it's not blowing exhaust into a water tank and causing the water tank to melt. The other thing that you're wanting to do is making sure that wherever you put it, it's easy access to turn off and on. Also keep in mind that you want this to be easy to service. Once that is done, the next thing you're going to want to do is have a fuel tank in place. That is actually one that we're using just to test the machine, and this is one that we have not completed yet, and have it to where you have it, the fuel connected to the fuel tank. And in this case, it's connected to this fuel tank because they're going to be testing it. On these V-twin engines that are not pull start, they have a fuel pump, and they will siphon from these tanks. Now, if it is a Honda GX390 or a Predator 420 or a Color 440, those engines do not have a fuel pump. They will not pull. It has to be gravity fed. So either you're going to use the tank that's above it or you're going to place a fuel tank above it, like mounting one here, for instance. Or there is a way to install a device that makes it to where it can siphon using the carburetor. You can also install an external electric solenoid. Whenever you plumb the machine, there are a lot of different ways to do it. We prefer plumbing machines from the bottom to the inlet of the machine. So what we do is we put on the filter at the tank. We have the water run from the bottom of the tank into the inlet of the pump. Then we have from the unloader where the quick connect is, this is called a whip line. This is the pressure hose, the pressure side. This whip line goes directly to your hose reel. Before we get to the hose reel, I want to discuss one more thing that's important to know about, and that's going to be your bypass. Whenever you install your bypass, which is where this yellow hose is, whenever you release the trigger gun, the water is all going through this bypass. So the water is going to go through here. And we have this sent to the top. Something important to know whenever you're installing a bypass is make sure at whatever angle it is pointing, we one time had a person think that they had issues with the machine because it was pulsating. And what happened is whenever the water level was low, the bypass was shooting directly at the inlet and causing a lot of bubbles to form. And so bubbles were siphoning into the inlet and being sent to the pump causing it to shake and a severe pressure loss with lots of vibration. So that's something important to note whenever you decide that you are going to install your bypass. On your hose reel, it will come generally with a half inch female pipe threading. What we do is you can use a hex bushing or a quick connect that can fit into this. In this case, we used a half inch MPT by three quarter inch barb that goes onto this three eighths quick coupler that's female pipe threaded that's attached to the whip line. And this is where the pressure comes out of. Your inlets are generally half inch, so you either need a half inch male pipe threaded quick connect that's three eighths, or you need to use a three eighths to half inch hex bushing, and then you can use a three eighths by three eighths quick connect, but then it kind of extends out a little bit. We like using the quick connects that are proper for this so that we don't have what we call a Christmas tree, which is additional unnecessary fittings. 
but this is going to be your pressure hose reel. You simply bolt it down and you mount it. One of the last things that's really important to do is making sure that your tank has a way for the water to escape so that you're not having to travel a fully loaded water. So what you do is you can put a ball valve and then have it to where it just dumps off right here. It's also a really great place to put a hand washing station. One last important detail I want to go over is to make sure that you have your battery connected properly. You have your black and your red, which is your negative and your positive. You're going to trace the wires and on any key start machine, you're going to have a battery that's connected to it. We connect the ground here against the engine and we connect the red here. All right, this is Marco with our washers at washmart.com, your Houston and DFW pressure washer store. Thank you for watching.